So here's the machine again here. Uh, so uh, replaced the capillary tubing with a needle valve finally. Uh, gave me a little more control. Um, the uh, .031 bore uh, needle valve or uh, capillary tubing was uh, kind of a disaster really. I don't know how I decided on 12 feet. Um, I, uh, I think I wanted to use the full length of cap tubing just so that I could uh, you know, shorten it a little bit at a time, thinking that I was going to end up uh, uh, needing a pretty pretty long length of it. Um, anyway, I finally got down to about two feet, uh, of all things, um, believing that I was going to kind of approach the asymptote of this kind of the knee of the curve, where uh, you know beyond a certain length you don't really get any more restriction, and below a certain length you end up with sort of a simple orifice. Um, didn't really find it. Didn't really find that experience. Um, so I put the needle valve in, which kind of gives me more control. You know, there, there's a part of me that uh, was starting to suspect that uh, just the severe imbalance of the, the size of my, you know, my coils, my compressor, and my fan. I tried to address the imbalance between the size of my heat exchangers and the compressor. This little 80 watt compressor with this small computer case fan, believing that if I reduce the amount of airflow across the coils. Um, the uh, the you know ridiculous oversized nature of them wasn't going to be such uh, such an issue. So uh, as a dehumidifier, uh, it's not particularly effective. I do get plenty of sweating on the coils, uh, but not at a rate sufficient enough for the the, the droplets to really uh, bead up and, and roll off. So whether or not they're just um, uh, re-evaporating uh, as air is drawn across them. I, I, I don't really know. Um, the other issue that I, I suspect could be a problem is the fact that, um, uh, you know, there, I know there's some oil being circulated around in the system. I know it makes its way the whole way through the evaporator back to the suction line. Uh, how much, you know, fouling is happening to the inside surface of the, of the heat exchanger tubing, I don't really know. Um, in one of the changeovers of capillary tubing, I did add a, uh, uh, this is a um, gauge right uh, right after the metering device, but before the, uh, the evaporator, looking for any kind of pressure drop, uh, and also with this T, it allows me to uh, gain access through a shredder there, um, and then also one here on the high side, I got a service port which allows me to recover a lot of the propane on the high side. Um, what it also allows me to do is once I have uh, shut the machine down a little bit, next time I pull the compressor off, I'm going to blow some nitrogen through um, and see how much oil comes out in various different places, uh, get an idea of, of, of where it's laying. Um, so uh, then the other thing is the uh, the condenser. So I can, uh, you know, this is relatively warm air coming out, which is you know what I want. I want to be producing water and blowing out warm air. Um, the size of the condenser is a, is a funny matter when it comes to air conditioners and dehumidifiers, I think. Um, it needs to be, you know, large enough to be able to, uh, to discharge the heat given the amount of, you know, airflow or water flow, what have you. But um, beyond a certain size, you end up doing a lot of subcooling. Um, and if the refrigerant charge isn't, uh, uh, say, large enough, uh, you could uh, you could end up in a situation where it just acts as a gas cooler and you don't get any condensation. You lose your uh, uh, liquid seal behind your metering device, and uh, the system's just circulating you know, vapors around. Um, you know, in my case, I'm getting plenty of subcooling. It's, the liquid's backing up, and it's getting plenty, plenty cool. Um, in order for me to uh, drive up the high side pressure enough to get a you know decent amount of circulation through there. Uh, if I add more refrigerant, it starts to back up a bit, and the uh, pressure starts to rise, and the temperature rises in the first few coils, but the subcooling is, uh, definitely continues on down through the coils. So it's, it's an interesting uh, conundrum to, to, you know, to think that, I, that possibly reducing the size of the condenser would actually you know, improve the performance. Um, the other thing is, you know, just, just the... the uh, um, the proportion of the size of the evaporator and the size of the condenser. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe there's something, there's probably a lot of other things that I'm missing, but I'm starting to grow weary of the, the dehumidifier um, for this little compressor. I, I'm sure a small DC dehumidifier could be built. Um, I, 
I really honestly think that I need smaller coils. Uh, it doesn't help that the relative humidity today is only about 27%. It's like 75 degrees outside right now, so it's, um, you know, have to, it has to work pretty close to, to freezing to do much as it is. Um, the needle valve, you know, I've tried and true, uh, tested it a lot before. Um, you know, problem being that it is a, a you know, a fixed orifice. You know, it's a manually controlled orifice and uh, doesn't really adapt well to changes in system conditions. You know, like a capillary tube can do it in a certain degree, and a TXP certainly can. Um, but uh, for testing purposes, it's uh, you can learn a lot in a short period of time. And I should have just went with my instinct and just went straight for the uh, the needle valve right away. But I wanted to play with some cap tubes, so I gained some experience there. I think what I'm going to do though is to uh, park the dehumidifier that I have here. Likely, I'm going to gut it. It's what I tend to do. There's a lot of valuable parts in there. And I'm going to move on to a refrigerator. Yeah, yeah, a refrigerator. Uh, Refrigerator will be a lot easier, and uh, I got a lot of ideas that I, I want to uh, I want to work with with this uh, little little compressor here. So uh, I think this is probably about the last time you'll see the dehumidifier. Um, if you watch this much of the video, you probably or the videos, you probably have a pretty good idea how this thing works. I'm just going to review it one more time before uh, I retire it. So we got a 80 watt uh, DC compressor. Um, it's got uh, flare. Flare fittings on both sides is the discharge here. Discharges into a condenser. The uh, outlet of the condenser goes through a uh, filter and dryer. Um, we have a high side gauge and service valve. Goes through a the liquid goes to a needle valve, which is restricted. Goes up and into the evaporator. You see we have service and gauge there. Comes out of the evaporator as a vapor. Clear the gauge service port and then back through into the compressor. So that's pretty much it. Uh, it's kind of air intake here from the old styrofoam you know, evaporator housing. Evaporator, dead airspace, condenser, dead airspace, fan discharges. So that's pretty much it and that's pretty much the end of the, this particular experiment. So thanks for watching.